Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and in this video I want to talk about the role of personality in leadership. Well, no matter whether or not you're uh, wanting to be a leader of a global corporation, or if you want to lead a small team, one of the best things that you could ever learn is really how to understand how to interact with other people. And just as a premise, I'd like to use the, the saying, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans. That means really understand uh, why people do what it is that they do. And if you want to earn their respect and loyalty, you've just got to show that you truly understand them. And you've got to make an attempt to understand them. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tools to help you better understand people. Well, you know we all have our own personalities, but do you know what to look for and what to do as you interact with people of different personalities? What I love about uh, today's short lecture is that uh, we're going to talk about some things that uh, you could look at in with people of any different culture and know what to look for and I'll talk about some specifics and some things for you to consider because everybody has their own personalities but generally speaking if you could understand uh, how to use this information to lead people you're gonna find that you have much more uh, satisfaction in your career so let's get started so leaders as we always talk about need followers and if you want to be an effective uh, leader, really, you really have to learn to understand people and respect people's differences. Respect really helps build trust, and trust, of course, is the glue of all relationships. That means you need to make the effort to understand people. What are you doing to understand why people do what it is that they do? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of theory here and, and help you understand from a, a understand people from all different cultures here in the United States and around the world. And if you think about these basic three dimensions, traditional, participative, and individualistic, it can help you really understand why people do what they do and how to inspire them to be effective members of your team. So the traditional really is a person that is known for having high standards and the sense of tradition. Participative people uh, care about people and serving others. And then individualistic, these people are the ones that love freedom and personal independence. So uh, we're going to talk about these different types of people of all different cultures using these three different dimensions of traditional, participative, and individualistic. So again, traditional people. Um, have traditional behaviors. For instance, like Moses of the Bible, for instance, that was kind of a, a, a traditional type personality. Or Queen Victoria, she was known for having moral strength and high standards of conduct. Uh, per, a participative type of personality, Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, she was concerned with the welfare and betterment of society. And Benjamin Franklin, uh, was was also participative and known for leaving his mark on America and around the world, right? And then individualistic, uh, Henry David Thoreau, he was like an in, influential thinker, and Joan of Arc, she led the French people by her conviction and brave example, for instance. So, People really, if you really want to understand personality, you need to understand that people are products of their culture. And even more specifically, their family, their town, and their country. So we shape each person's personality uh, from the formative years on up. And our, per, our, our style of interpersonal relations is influenced by how we're raised. You know, we observe the people around us. Uh, society teaches and reinforces behavior styles, so uh, if schools uh, are constantly instilling what is right and, and what is wrong. And then uh, we, we learn through study of interpersonal relationships, and these kinds of things help shape uh, our own character. Uh, traditional social orientations. Uh, they put needs and interests of the group above the individual again. Uh, individualistic 
people have a more of a social orientation that where they see themselves as being separate from others. Uh, and then participative social orientations are kind of the middle ground between traditional and individualistic. And generally speaking, they are warm and supportive. So some traditional cultures, if we look at this on a global scale, are England, Germany, Spain, Japan, China, and India. Um, in the United States, we are about 60% participative. And some individualistic cultures are French, Italian, Greek, uh, Greece. So um, just to give you some examples. Personality and culture. Um, there are always exceptions uh, to some of these generalizations. You know, I have a, I have two sisters, and um, one is more like me than the other, and we grew up in the same household. So uh, there are always going to be things that shape us. Uh, human traits always will vary in different degrees. So you just can't say everybody from this country is exactly like this. Obviously, a person. Uh, really can be and generally is a mixture of all three of those different styles uh, but they, they'll exhibit you know more strengths over others in different different ways and that's what makes people unique of course uh, there are certain qualities that really belong to all people so they're kind of universal traits and these things include honesty concern for others and open-mindedness you know we really as humans we need to be told the truth and we don't like not being told the truth we don't like seeing people generally speaking being hurt or suffering and uh, most people really want to continue to grow and they but if you think about human nature we kind of have to have an open mind in order to grow and survive right so um, when we we look at the different dimensions here with personalities in mind, let's take a look at control. Uh, traditionals uh, are more comfortable with rules and practices and procedures. Participatives uh, prefer interpersonal commitment as a form of control. And then individualists, they, they really dislike the idea of being uh, restricted from freedom. Uh, action is another dimension that we can consider. Traditionals, uh, they, are, they have a basis for uh, direction from authority and um, around them. Uh, participatives have a basis in, in discussion and a, an agreement in others. And again, we're talking about understanding others. And then individualists have a basis of direction from within. Um, in understanding others, uh, the w traditionals uh, avoid deviation from authoritative direction. Participatives avoid confrontation and strive to reach agreement. And individualists avoid not being themselves. Understanding others, uh, the traditionals as far as perception of responsibility believe the highest allegiance go to uh, subordinate powers. Uh, participatives feel responsible to help others. And then individuals assign responsibility for their actions to their own conscience. So that's the perception of responsibility. Uh, with goals uh, desired, traditionals value organization and order. Participatives value group consensus and smooth human relations and individualists value independence and freedom so that's the goal uh, desired orientation uh, basis for growth uh, traditionals believe there's a time and place for everything participatives prefer growth through human interaction and individualists prefer growth through introspection and self-analysis. So hopefully you're getting an idea of each of these three personality styles. Um, position in relationship to others is another th dimension. So traditions, uh, traditionals are comfortable as members of a hierarchy. Participatives are comfortable as members of a team. And individualists 
are more comfortable as separate people. Again, I know I'm kind of going through these as a whole, but if you if you really want to learn these, uh, rewind the video and then really visualize what these personalities look like and then see if you could put yourself in a group and see if you can look at other personality types and see how they fit into the bigger picture. Um, so individualists again are more comfortable as separate people. Uh, material goods um, dimension. So uh, traditionals are, are really excellent competitors. Participatives uh, collaborate to get material goods and individualists think that everyone should have material good. Uh, identification and loyalty. Traditionals uh, first loyalty is to the organization. Participatives loyalty is to the group. Individualists uh, do not really value loyalty but when they have it they have it intensely for the person or ideal that they deem worthy. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, time perspective is another dimension to consider. Traditional's perspective is in the future. Participative's perspective is in the near future. And individual perspectives is in the present. Uh, differences in personalities really result in perceptions and judgments that could really be poles apart. So, you know, different personality styles because they believe what they believe really uh, can, could be irritated with other people's personality styles if they if they can't relate to it. And that's re what's really important to understand here. Awareness of the nature and needs of different types of people really is the first step to building. Uh, relationships and awareness really can lead to new levels of cooperation and success so it really is important to try to understand why people do what they do and just learn to respect the differences right so again as a leader if you want to meet the needs of traditionals provide work rules and job descriptions with duties spelled out uh, in, in order of provide an organizational chart, respect traditions and establish you know ways of doing things, avoid changes when possible, accentuate reasons over emotion, so reason versus emotion. Um, with traditionals recognize good work and signs of status, reinforce company loyalty, communicate the mission, goals and objectives, provide an action plan, uh, keep work areas organized, clean and safe. Be clear and logical when giving orders. So as you think about your workplaces, are you thinking about who these workplaces were designed for or designed by? You know, different philosophies created by people who have a belief system based on their personality style, their preferences. Uh, with participatives, if you want to meet their needs, include them in the decision-making process. Provide off-the-job social interaction, emphasize teamwork, uh, well-run staff meetings, ask for opinions, ask what is said and demonstrate responsiveness, get to know the person and, and really appeal to logic and feelings. Uh, use communication all sorts of communication vehicles when uh, if you want to meet the needs of participatives um, provide growth opportunities and keep human relations smooth now let's talk about individualistic if you want to meet the needs of individualists individualists uh, recognize independence and personal freedom provide immediate reward for performance talk in terms of present provide opportunities for growth and then keep things stimulating and individualists accentuate feelings and logic when handling problems reward good performance keep things casual avoid rigid controls treat individualists as a separate person Just to improve communication uh, number one talk it out uh, use a positive approach uh, talk it out in private uh, talk it out when people are fresh um, and and really uh, help people understand is it true is it necessary is it kind 
Step number two, be understanding. Look at things from another person's view. Try and understand the forces that influence the shape of a person's personality. Step number three, be flexible. Be willing to compromise. Uh, everyone really must be flexible. So you as a leader, of course, have to model this. Uh, step number four, be tolerant. Uh, there's going to be differences in personality and that's just the way it is. So uh, being able to understand that is really important. Uh, tolerance really uh, of different styles really is necessary if you want to have really be able to effectively communicate with other people. So talk it out, be understanding, be flexible, and be tolerant. Uh, leaders really need uh, to understand the different styles. Different types of people need different treatment to be satisfied and achieve their potential. And when in Rome, do as the Romans, right? Traditionals get upset by the absence of planning and clear guidelines. Participatives are upset by conflict and, in, and, and impersonal relationships. And individualists are upset by strict rules and close supervision. Effective leaders honor the needs of each of these three types of people. So really understand who it is that you're interacting with so that you can adjust yourself accordingly. Leaders truly need to um, recognize who it is they're talking with. With traditionals, uh, bring roots, stability, discipline that really um, helps people get what it is that they need, provide systems and procedures that allow people to work together. So if you recognize that you're working with a traditional, honor them. Participatives, uh, when you're interacting with them, recognize they want to interact with you and they're generally friendly and they provide the glue that hold other people together. Individualists provide new ideas and creativity and you just have to understand that they are independent and they resist supervision. So if you can understand how to manage that style of person, you're going to be a lot better off. It's just the way people are and you have to respect people where they are. And I always say meet people where they are. Um, if you want to really understand people, take a look at their character. Uh, we'll forgive a person for basically anything if the person's character is good. That's a general uh, characteristic that, that goes across all cultures. If you want to be a, an effective leader, uh, really recognize a more humanistic approach to dealing with people. People are people. And then recognize and respect their diversity. You know, tolerate differences and even more important than that really value those differences because those differences are what can make the organization stronger if you could learn to leverage those more creativity more ideas more understanding about other people that helps make systems better so dealing with other people a uh, leader really must understand and value these different types of people um, be wise really learn who it is that you're interacting with, be caring, and be flexible. Uh, one of the, today with personality in mind, uh, and universally speaking, uh, you could look for these basic five personality traits. And these really will help you be able to understand who, who it is that you're dealing with, because they'll have these five different dimensions that in different levels. So if openness to experience is one of these traits and th that's talking about being imaginative, creative, original, curious, independent, adventurous, um, they like variety. Conscientiousness is about being uh, careful, reliable, hardworking, uh, well-organized, punctual, uh, persevering, dependent. Extroversion is about being sociable, talkable, fun-loving, outgoing, active, people-oriented, affectionate. Uh, agreeableness is about being kind, cooperative, helpful, generous, lenient, uh, lenient, courteous, considerate. And then neuroticism is about anxious, um, being self-conscious, worrying, emotional, vulnerable, 
and high strung. So really be able to think about we each have these all five of these characteristics, they're universal, but being able to identify the levels in which uh, each person you're interacting with has these five traits, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So uh, that's in the psychological literature, and you can look more of it up. That's big five personality traits. So uh, people in high and openness really like to um, be more creative. Um, they, people high in conscientiousness tend to be thorough, organized, and dependent. People high in extroversion tend to be active, outgoing, and sociable. People high in agreeableness tend to be good-natured, uh, courteous, and nurturing. And then people in neuroticism tend to be anxious, emotional, and worrying. And we each have all five of these characteristics but it just kind of gives you a system for you to be able to take a look at uh, these different traits and, and ask yourself how much of these things uh, do other people have and then learn to uh, leverage uh, a person's preferences in order to gain uh, build trust and really gain what people have to offer. All right, so I've given you a lot to think about, a couple of different models. Remember, traditional, participative, and individualistic, and then the, the five, the big five dimensions of uh, openness to experience conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. I hope that's given you uh, a little better understanding on how you can be a more effective leader. I've given you a lot to think about and hopefully you can use some of these uh, things from this lesson today to help you be more effective and more important than that I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Paul Gerhardt.